first. Hi, Chantal. Hey, Roxanne. Happy, I don't know what day it is. It's Wednesday night. Actually, Chantel, before I had um, pressed record, you said we should do the reunion before we talk Salt Lake City. So I'm totally down for doing that. But can I just tell you guys that Chantel is literally a saint because we were supposed to film this probably an hour and a half ago. Oh, there's Charlie under the bench, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't. I, no, you I, know it, who you are. And like, you're like Angie K tickling their daughter at 13 years old in the bed. <laughs> Okay. That's who you are. No, for real. Well, no, because even though we said it's nice that New Jersey or New Jersey, oh my gosh, Orange County comes on at eight. It's like overwhelming for me because that's like the time I put my kids to bed and I'm like sitting here trying to do that and then watch. So of course they're upstairs like messing around and they woke up their brother and Chantal's like, so when are we going to do this though? Like, let me know. And it just, it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And my husband's sick. So we you know when like men are sick, they're on do not disturb mode so there's not been babies able, no really really and we've been he's been on do not disturb mode since yesterday at 5 p.m and then like today i said something and i was like i'm done with this and he's like i do so much and i'm like oh my gosh so um it's been a crap show here so now it's 10 34 we were supposed to do this at like 9 15 <laughs> chantelle is just so freaking patient with me and literally, I, so I, I, what I ended up doing was like, I'm going to come upstairs, do the podcast. I'm like to my husband, this is a business. Like when I need your help, I need your help. And me and Chantel need to do this. And then all of a sudden I hear Charlie and she's like, mommy, I waited for you to lay with me. And so I went and laid with her and kissed her and then realized she was playing me and I, I left, but now she's here. <laughs> I, I know. I know how Charlie works. I know. He's, she's crazy. She hates sleeping. <laughs> so my so, um, yeah, anyways, so let's kind of talk the show now. Are you, what did you think about the reunion? Well, let's do like fun. We should do a fun thing where we talk, um, we do like a reunion of words where we like talk about their looks first. So, oh, I had, look, I, yeah, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Who do you think looked the best? This is the first award we're giving out for the night. I think Heather looked the best. I am all about like a classic, simple look. I don't think you need to be like out boring. There oh wow! Okay. I'm just kidding. She looked good, but it just was boring. Like, even though I can't stand Tamara, I thought Tamara looked the best. Ew. Okay. I know. Who do you think looked the worst? Um, Shannon, without a doubt, she looked terrible. First off, the hair and then the dress color. Like I feel like very few people can pull off that color. I thought Gina looked really bad. Gina did look really bad. She had like a really poor spray tan and her dress was yes. giving me like 2009 circa. It's Club. Just, yeah, like not cute, not class, but like also so Gina. I know, but it was just so um, like, ugh, I don't know. It was just so bad to me. Like I thought Shannon was a little bit better, but um, Gina's was just her spray tan. Emily gotta looked go. good too. Like she she did look good. I'll give her that. But Yeah, she looked like a mom. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is that what you say about me? No, because you don't look like a mom. Oh, my gosh. Like, she looked yeah. like our moms. That's what I mean, like, my mom, you know? Oh, my gosh. Wait, that's kind of true. She Like, yeah. her hair, like, it's, like, this, like, side ponytail. Like, I didn't even know what it was. Like, I didn't even know her curls. I don't know. She looked yeah. she's pretty. Like, I thought I, her makeup I looked good. Yeah, I think she's a pretty girl, so... I just yeah. thought like a mom. So there's nothing oh, wrong with that. Wow. Um, who else are we missing that we're not? Who sat next to? Oh, Jen. What do you think about our girl, Jen? Chantel. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, did I go in and out? <laughs> you sure did. Okay. Can you hear me you now, think? guys? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Who was your favorite dress? No, I asked you. What do you think about our girl, Jen? Um, I'll tell you. I mean, I thought she looked good. I thought she looked really pretty. She looked good for her first reunion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I I kind of felt like I would have liked to see her hair up with like her bangs out. Okay, yeah, because she kind of did that a lot though in the season. I don't know. I thought that was yeah. Like I, I like. I that actually did her. like her dress the most. Her dress was my favorite out of everyone's, and then I thought I think Taylor's was really cute too. It was like was very on theme. Yeah, I think, though, that with Jen, she has such a beautiful body that I would have loved to see it because she literally has the body of my dreams. Yes. And the last award is who tried the hardest and it didn't land. Um, it, Like, as in looks? Yeah. Oh, I mean, Gina or Shannon? Yeah, I thought it was Shannon. 
Yeah, like clearly that was like what. Because sometimes, was like you could still look amazing, but then you, you were trying too hard a little bit, but like it just didn't land. It just didn't work. And I, I thought, thought it- that was Shannon with her like crimped, wavy hair, beachy vibe. It just didn't go. Yeah, no, not cute. I thought it was funny when they talked about Shannon's hair, and then Shannon says, "Well, it's not as big as Teresa's was." It was like and- a cute, funny moment. Um, and it's like Tamara's laughing. It's like, don't laugh. You talk so much shit about her. Yeah, just stop talking, please. Like, I can't stand her. Um, but, did, I mean, Tamara didn't talk that much shit about Shannon. She talked more shit about Heather, you know? No, no. I'm talking about, like, don't laugh um, at the Teresa joke because you talk so much shit about Teresa. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. 100%. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that went over my head. So Andy asks Heather how she feels with Tamara trying to get all the ladies against her. And Heather says, coming in today, you think I'd feel vindicated? Because, like, yeah, you should. But she's like, I'm actually just sad. And Tamara says, I never came into the season to turn everyone against you. And Heather's like, have you watched the episodes? And to me, honestly, Tamara's truly the worst human alive. She now says, well, your co-host said that I don't belong on Orange County. and, and, And that's apparently why she did all this. And if that was the case, like, why wasn't that brought up once ever when exactly. watching this whole season? Yep. She always deflects. I guarantee what happened was, like, the one person who's on Tamara's side messaged her and was like, did you know that Heather's co-host said this? So now she has that? Because n- we all know, Tamara, if she had this, she would have brought it up. She would have brought it to everyone's attention way before. So I believe that this was, like, some new thing she had found out. And Heather was like, I didn't say it, though. So it's like, okay. One Uh, one thing I usually do feel like on Tamara on reunions, she like knows how to play like almost. Twist it. Yeah. yeah, Like she, yeah. She almost plays a victim a little bit. She, she acts like she's like apologetic, but this, this one, she kind of wasn't. You kind of can tell she was nervous. Yeah. Um, but there was so much shit at her because you were like such a horrible being. But she she was nervous, but she was relieved because she still had people having her back. Imagine if they all came against her, then then she would die. Um, so and then also it's like the one thing about Tamara that pisses me off is like her deflection, right? So she's like, Oh, I I, you know, Heather's co-hosted that. That's why I'm uh, upset and gunning for Heather. But it's like be mad at Andy Cohen and Bravo because they fired you, not Heather or her co-host for having an opinion on you leaving. Exactly. Well, and then Tamara acts like she's about to cry and says it hurt her feelings. And I just, you guys, I can't. I, I, was, I truly seriously if, if that hurt your feelings why haven't you been why haven't you said it oh my gosh so and andy, even andy like thank god andy was like they never sh- i never she never called me and said that to me oh yeah that too exactly so she looks so stupid and then andy you know moving over to our girl jen andy brings up how they asked ryan to come and tell his side and that he declined and i I'm so glad he declined. I'm so because Chantel, we know if he came on, Tamara would have literally made it like he was coming for her and he'd become a villain somehow just because of the way that Bravo would edit it to make him look bad. And even if like Ryan had some points where he's like, Eddie told me this, you told me this, blah, blah, blah. It would have just like probably the way Bravo would edit it would probably have made him look bad or Tamara would have lied on him and wouldn't even let him speak and then act like he's talking to a woman a certain way. Can you imagine what a shit show would have been it? Would oh, have been 100%. He I mean, he already looks bad as it is. So like, it's like, you're, you're not even a great guy, but then the whole, the whole point is. Chanel, that but I don't think he's not a great guy. Like I think, okay, we can't really judge about what Tamara is saying. Like, oh, he's not a great guy. Like we don't know that Jen's clearly very happy and she seems like such a sweet person. We've also seen how Tamara guns for people and what she does. And she's done that this whole time about Ryan calling him a piece of shit. Just because someone says you're a piece of shit doesn't mean you're a piece of shit. Yes. They were on a break and he cheated on her, but like they technically no, were Roxanne, on a break. No, come on. Come no, on. I really don't think that he's Are like you joking? With what we just listened to about like, they were literally together after three months and he's still sending like D picks to the same girl. Like it, no, he's not a good guy at all. But one thing I would say is that it would deflect from, you know, Jen's issues with Tamara not being a good friend. So, like, that's why I'm happy he didn't come. But, you know, he's just not a good guy. And it's really scary that she's going for him. <laughs> okay. I just completely disagree with you um, on that. I think that Tamara just has her way. So, for you to say that he's not a good guy is kind of annoying. But <laughs> I, I mean, I, I feel bad. Like, I'm just saying he doesn't seem like he's he's just an F boy sometimes. Yeah, so what? So is every guy. Like, I don't understand. I don't. 
I don't know. I think Jen is a very smart person. I don't think, I think that, I don't know. I just want to hear Ryan's side. I really just want to hear his side about the whole thing because I feel like it's not fair that all we're hearing is Tamara saying like, he's a piece of shit. I'm over it. And I I agree. It wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been able to even hear his side at the reunion with those ladies there. Yeah. And then they talk about Ryan like ring shopping and Emily goes, can I ask, was that for the show? And she's like, no, we've spoken about it a lot. And that annoyed me because hasn't Ryan gone through enough? Like they keep trying to come for this guy and it's annoying. Like every little thing he does, it's not right. It's kind of Chantel like how with like Louis, they do the same thing. No matter what he does, it's not the right thing. And people are coming for him. Again, yeah, we're I not agree. like saying like it's- he's not like a fuck boy or whatever it is, but... I don't know. I, we've just never really heard his side and it kind of sucks. To me, it's like the whole time, like Tamara just kept trying to ask like her questions when they were going at it. And it's like, stop trying to deflect and ask her questions, like acting like you care. Exactly. Yeah. That's the one thing I can't stand about uh, Tamara. Like she doesn't want to talk to you. Jen does not want to talk like, to you. She owes you nothing. Bye. And she's Jen- so nice. She's so oh nice. Gosh, she's so into her. I know. I literally said, I'm like, she's a class act because... Because, you know, like, even though Tamara keeps coming in on her, she, Tamara also, you know what she says? She says that Ryan ended up telling her in Cabo that he was having an affair with Jen while she was with Will. And Gina is like, wait, Tamara, are you Will's friend or were you Jen's friend? And Tamara's like, it all turned for me when Ryan cheated on Jen. And it's like, shut the F up, Tamara, because just like you're saying, you don't care. And, you know, just like Jen recently said in an interview, she said, you know, Tamara wanted to make a comeback and she used me to, she didn't say she used me, but she said she wanted to make a big comeback. And to me, she used Jen to do that because prior to the show, Jen and Tamara were clearly on great terms. I was just dying because Gina was like acting like she's Andy, like um, in, like with the um, her no. little comments, asking the questions. She's like, you know, helping the her and Emily go. both. I can't. I Emily think really were... talked to me, but oh my gosh, I actually found Emily to be very annoying at this episode, very yeah. very annoying. And um, I think Emily was just trying to be supportive of Jen because she knows Jen is like a breakout star, and not one person has a bad thing to say about her. So she's like, oh okay, like they all like her. Let me be nice and like go out of my way. And it's like, where was this energy the entire season? I agree. So Jen clarifies Ryan never cheated on her, that they were on a break. And Emily is like, well, doesn't it concern you that he's banged someone while you guys were on a break? And Heather's like, why is she being attacked nonstop for things Ryan did? And Andy even agrees with this. And Tamara says, it's frustrating that Jen is defending her boyfriend. But didn't Tamara defend Eddie about the gay rumors? Like, should we have pressed her for defending that? I'm so confused. There were so many rumors, even till this day, about a bar that Eddie apparently allegedly goes to. That's a gay bar. And if anyone has ever said anything about Eddie, Tamara goes crazy. So what's the big deal if Jen is defending her man? I I, don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think they need to crucify her for it. Yeah. And then Jen wants to know when it switched between her and Tamara because, you know, Tamara was the one who brought her to the friend group and Tamara tries to downplay their friendship because she's flip-flopper Tamara. And Jen says, I was your friend. Um, And she says, you're a piece of shit friend to Tamara. And Tamara says, F off, saying Jen is the actual piece of shit. And then she calls Jen a cheater when it's a well-known fact that Tamara cheated on Simon with Eddie to the point that her children stopped talking to her. Luckily, Jen is smart and she calls her out on this and she's like you're the one who's a cheater and Tamara pretends like she's confused then she deflects and says I don't care if you're a cheater I don't care if you left your husband but you literally do care because you haven't shut the hell up about what Jen did and she's like I've been married for like whatever how many years she said and it's like no we're not talking about this relationship yeah it, she knew why are you forgetting about saying? the relationship no, no, she knew she was just like playing dumb and then when she realized like wow Jen's gonna keep pressing it she then was like listen I don't care if you cheated but does anyone realize why Tamara does this she acts like this to deflect from her failing relationship it's clear as day her and Eddie are so over each other so she doesn't want to focus on that and she deflects from that by you know talking about other people's relationship at least but why stay together like why are you guys still together oh um i mean i don't know i i, I yeah, that's a good everyone question. turn on her and start talking about their her relationship yeah Andy asked Shannon her thoughts on Tamara coming in on Jen. And Shannon tries to defend Jen and Emily and Tamara shut her up real quick. And they say, <laughs> I was, I was dying oh at gosh. this for them to call her out. Well, because all season long, Chantel, we really did see Shannon defend Jen and say it's too much. But Emily and Shannon or Tamara were both like, bullshit. You thought it was juicy. You said we should dig more and get it on camera. And I don't know. What were you thinking about it, Chantel? 
I mean, I think that's like really shady of Shannon. Like, what was your motive? Because people, because people are talking about your relationships, and now you're just like trying to make yourself look good. She was doing that. I think. I think Emily and Tamara are right with Shannon. Well, he would. Well, that would piss me off if like she was saying that behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden we are on camera and she acts different. Like I'd be like, okay, really? So I mean, I don't blame him for calling like the her girls, out. The girls on this um like reunion like, kept bringing up, like kept breaking the fourth wall. Like they kept bringing up, no, you said to do this on camera. It was kind of crazy that they kept doing that. Yeah, I know, man. If you guys only knew what happens behind the scenes, if you I only swear. knew. So they talk. D-I-C-K picture and Jen is shook that Tamara screen grabbed it and she makes a good point saying that tells you all you need to know about the person you are she's like because if Terry Dubrow accidentally sent that to me I'd call Heather right away and it would be off my phone and then uh, Tamara like actually kept it and screen grabbed it and then Tamara is like stop protecting this piece of S-H-I-T and it's like stop talking about Ryan imagine anyone doing this to Eddie Ryan has been nothing but nice to Tamara and clearly you don't really value your relationship with Jen. So why do you care so much about her relationship? And to me, Chantel, to me, Tamara wants Ryan. I don't know. This is what I'm getting. <laughs> she, I'm not kidding. I really do think that Tamara, it, she's like envious of Jen and she is kind of jealous of the lifestyle that Ryan can provide just because we know Eddie can never provide that for her. Or it was like, you know, like whatever, whenever she got with Eddie and after her like feeling divorced or her marriage and like you get this young, hotter guy, she's now seeing Jen do that. Yeah. But the only difference is Eddie had nothing, you know, she opened the gym off of her money. Okay. Let's be real. Eddie literally had nothing. Ryan is very, very successful. So it's like, um, this is the one thing that Tamara wanted and couldn't get. And that's why when she got fired off the show, she was like freaking out. Cause she's like, what are we going to do financially? It's not cheap to live in orange County. So yeah, that's my whole theory. I don't know. Correct me if you guys think I'm wrong, but I really do think that's what it is. Jen says that she's so happy to be with him. And Tamara says she apologizes, which is like a load of BS. Five minutes ago, you call him a cheater or you, you called uh, Jen a cheater. And now like you're apologizing to her. And Again, most people will protect their man. So I don't know what Tamara was expecting for Jen. I was just proud of Jen because she didn't accept the apology. She just said, we'll agree to disagree. I know. I think she, I think she did so well. Yeah. So Taylor comes in and we start talking about the Heather Dubrow stuff with Taylor. And Taylor says that Heather came off very dismissive about the movie rule. And Heather says she wasn't trying to be condescending. But she did say the comment like she was like, that's cute about the movie rule. And I could see why Taylor felt the way she did. I, I still don't get it. I really just don't understand oh, really? Taylor's. Okay. No, I just don't get it. I think you're being really dramatic. And she's saying that's cute that you want me to be on there. Thank you. Chanel, but if you said to me that's cute, <laughs> which you have, I look at you and I'm like, calm down for a snack right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. Because we literally, like, if one of us, like, said, oh, that's cute, it's so dismissive. But she didn't say it that way, though. She's like, oh, that's so cute. Like, as in, like, endearing. Chantal. Okay, Louie with the pajama comment? No. <laughs> so, sorry. I don't, I'm not buying I never it. agreed to that, so don't put my name on that. Well, I mean, but Heather, like, did apologize for it. And Taylor did say, you know, I just feel like that's, you know, how you talk. And maybe I shouldn't take offense to that. But then they talk about, like, the 1900 comment where, ta where uh, Tamara had said that, Heather's like last movie was in the 1900s um, or where she had movie roles. And of course, Tamara doesn't even own up to it. We know she literally said this. And Tamara's like, I didn't say that. And I'm like, oh my God. But Heather made the best point because she was like, what if I made a comment about your gym? And I said, nine years, you didn't even have that gym for long. And how much money did you lose on your gym? What would you say? And Tamara's lying ass was like, I'd feel secure about it. I'm secure in myself. We've seen Tamara been like, called out by people and the way she reacts is not oh i'm secure about it so now every time we she reacts we say oh it's because she's so damn insecure absolutely not yeah uh um, you could tell she was shook that she got called out for this yeah i mean there was so much of tamra twisting it that honestly like throughout the reunion my mind was all over the place where i was trying to write notes chantel but i could not keep up even if i paused it like my head could not process like everything that was happening oh okay wow did, well, you didn't feel that. I just felt like there was so much. Like, there was so much lies and twisting. And I was just like, oh, my God. I can't keep up with these lies. 
It was a lot better than I thought it would be. Didn't you think it was going to be bad? I wanted it to be more focused. Like, I didn't want to focus on Gina and the CPS comment because it's already, I know it's messed up, but like, I really don't care. Like, I honestly don't like Gina. So, um, it, it's the worst comment that Shannon could have said, but I felt like we focus a lot on Gina and I don't care to focus on Gina this episode. So, yeah, that's the only thing. Um, okay, but we need to talk about this. So, um, we talk about Tamara twisting it. And in one scene, Tamara still denies saying that Emily is not a practicing lawyer. But again, we see the footage. And what kills me is that Emily's more mad that Heather didn't defend Emily in that moment. Why are we not mad at Tamara for saying this? And why is she so sensitive? Right. Oh, my gosh. And then she tried to make it like Heather was a sensitive one. I know. And oh, my God. That was like mind-blowing to me. I know. It really was. Well, Emily She starts- says you get offended by everything. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, first, Emily starts getting emotional. She says she doesn't like people saying she's not a real lawyer. And then Gina steps in and sa- says, yeah, it's not right. Just like when they say Heather's not a real actress, which I was like, oh, damn, Gina's really defending Heather here. And then, like we're talking about, Emily's like, do you feel isolated because you're offended all the time with what everyone does? and say and I'm like excuse me Emily you literally just got offended that Heather didn't defend you for something horrible that Tamara said and you did not say one word to Tamara about it so I am so confused here are we watching the show because to me Heather played it so cool all season long everything everyone was doing to her was offensive And on top of that like I feel I still feel like she handled it well and didn't make it seem like she was so offended yeah exactly i'm honestly convinced emily came for heather solely because of where she was seated at the reunion like she went hard at heather at the reunion i thought she was going to calm down because of the uh, backlash that they were all receiving and i'm like why does emily keep going in on heather like why is she still coming in at her does she not like read the room about how everyone is team heather even people who didn't like heather and then i looked and i saw where emily was sitting at the reunion and i was like Oh, okay. That makes sense. Like (laughs) she's sitting at the end of the row, you know, they always get scared. So they'll talk the most. You know, what's crazy though, is like throughout this whole thing until obviously the very end, Shannon barely said one word. Really? I felt like I saw Shannon talk quite a bit. No, she didn't. I haven't. No, I, I, I was like paying attention to her. I mean, she talked about, um, she had responded to like, oh, what I felt about the Jen stuff. Because and then, Andy asked her. Yeah, but still. And then they talk. I shouldn't even need to. I mean, she's like good TV. Like we'll still watch her. Whereas an Emily like kept stepping in and restating things that we didn't need to be restated. Yeah. They overcompensate. For, oh my because gosh. Because they want, they so want a next season. Yeah. So they talk about the CPS stuff. And I get why Gina's mad. And Gina, and, and Gina asked Shannon, she's like, what are my kids' name? And I covered my eyes when I, cause I, I knew, I knew Shannon didn't know their names. And Gina's like, don't talk about my kids. You don't even know their name. And Gina is upset that after watching it back, Shannon didn't even text her. And this is where Emily keeps inserting herself. And you, again, Emily is doing this cause she knows the game. She's insecure about where she's seated. So she was the loud one. So Bravo thinks she's relevant and keeps her on for next season. Cause she kept saying, Shannon did it and like would keep talking and it's like okay can someone forward this we want to get to like what about these two girls I don't know why Emily's inserting herself in this so Emily just really truly annoyed me on this I really tuned her out oh my gosh yeah see I couldn't because she kept she's very loud when she talks you know she really is like our moms (laughs) <laughs> she really is wait you guys i have a story to tell you guys so um so sh- you know about chantelle's wedding that's really all honestly i have for the reunion but for chantelle's wedding um our parents like my mom called my husband and she's like i want to upgrade my seat to first class can you do it for me and so my husband like went in and did it for her because you know they oh actually- he did it for her because she kept calling me and like i kept like i'm the one that told her and then she kept calling me like three times about it and like i was busy so i didn't answer her yeah, no, he did it for her. You, you know me, I have no patience. I just can't do it because like she'll be like <laughs> on my face like and I'm like, mom, stop it. So um, she just asked him because he'll just do everything that she has. So um, so like I'm like, why do you want to be first class? Like honestly, like our parents are pretty stingy. So I'm like, why do you want to be first class? I'm so confused. And then Chantal, tell me the story you told me today. Well, I was really like a nice daughter and I upgraded my parents to oh. first class for my wedding. So I did that because one, my mom really doesn't like flying. She barely flies like once every like six years or something. And um, 
she gets like claustrophobic from the plane so does your mom they're they're just really bad flyers and she's just been been, like so annoying about the plane so i was like you know what maybe if like she knows that she's gonna get a bigger seat and be first because they hate being in the back too because it's like it's like a lot to walk back there you know and my mom you don't know what her. they've done to us <laughs> on airplanes, by the way. Like, especially my mom, you don't know what they've done. It is guys, like they will tell the, the girl, they'll tell the people at the front that they need to go first or they need to go last. So then, you know, like that little thing that connects the airplane to the airport, <laughs> they run, they sprint. Yeah. <laughs> and they scream because <laughs> they're so claustrophobic, dude. No, my mom would go in there and then she would run out. She'd be screaming. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, something's wrong with this woman. Like, she's having a heart attack. And we're like, mom. And then she would come up to us and she'd be like i'm not going i remember we went to hawaii oh yeah and she yeah did they, that. they do that they do that oh, like i'm not going i'm not going on. Like, oh my god they threaten it so much and honestly i feel like the airports are now like way cooler and nicer that they'll let them go first so our parents are at more at ease whereas in before it wasn't like that they'd be like okay get played we don't really care about your claustrophobic problem and um she would literally come out and be like, I'm not going, we're not going, cancel this. And we're like, you're the one who dies to go on trips. Like, what are we doing here? So this is like a major reoccurrence. Anyways, what were you saying? Well, you know, what's crazy is that like now, since I've been getting a little bit claustrophobic, like I understand where they're coming from now. I really do get it. Like yeah. that little, that entryway, like I don't want to be stuck in there waiting for people to go on the plane. Like it's very, it's very claustrophobic. But yeah, so then. Oh, you just cut off Chantal. All right. Your first glass. That's how you cut off the entire time. Oh my gosh, what the heck? <laughs> we're going to have what to edit part that. Was it, yeah. it was like 26 minutes. We're going to have to edit it. Ugh. Oh my gosh. So you cut off and I think it was the part where you were like, because I was like, Chanda, like, okay, anyways, where were you getting at? Okay. So you're oh, you know, you, and then you had said, you had said, um, you had said something about um, like your understanding now as you get older and then you were going to go into the story. Okay. Sh- should I even say that part then? Yeah, say it. About me feeling claustrophobic? Oh, no, 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 not that part. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. Okay. All right. So then your mom calls me. I forgot what she called me about. And I was just saying something to her. I was like, yeah, you know, like I upgraded my parents to first class. And she's like, you upgraded your parents to first class. And like, she was so shook because apparently my mom didn't tell her, which is surprising because, you know, our parents talk like more than us. And, um, and then the whole time she was like, I want to be upgraded. I want to be upgraded. And she's like, was like jealous or something. And she's like, how much was it like hounding me on the, on the, about the price? And it wasn't that much, you guys. I think it was like 200 bucks. I think that's why they like feel like it's right for them to upgrade to first class. And so then, um, and then like a couple days later, I hear my mom talking to her other sister and she's like, why didn't you tell me you're on first class? And my mom is savage and was like, I was waiting for the day for them to see me go up first and sit in first class while they have to go in the back. <laughs> like, you guys have no idea how savage Chantal's mother is. Okay, <laughs> when I tell you, first off, these women, they are on the phone probably six hours out of the day. Like, they call each other. There's five sisters. They call each other six hours out of the day. They would choose each other over us. Like, they would literally choose each other, pick their sister's side over their children's side. Like, that is our parents. And the fact that they are so close that my crazy ass aunt would not tell her sisters by the way i'm in first class because she wanted them to wait till the day came so they could be like so she could be like haha get played i'm in first class you peasants is like wild and keep in mind they're not like american like they're obviously they're boaters like they're like like it would literally be my mom walking and she'd be like what what you know what are you doing and your mom would be like yeah guess what i'm in first class go back over there like that's (laughs) how it would be yeah so it was so wild when Chantal told me that I was literally dying laughing. It was such a funny story. Yeah, it really was. So we just had to share that because that happened today. And I was like, Chantal, can we please talk about that in the podcast? Because I need them to understand how our parents are because it is so scary. <laughs> like, <laughs> But if anyone knows Chantal's mom, like that would be Chantal's mom. That's exactly what she would do. She would do something like that. My mom is the opposite where my mom would like scream it through the rooftop that she got first class. Yeah, she'd be so excited. Yeah, she would call them. She would call every sister right away and be like, guess what I just did? I booked first class. Um, But anyways, yeah, that was just funny. Anyways, we're excited for your wedding. It's coming up, y'all. I know. Um, less than four months. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk Salt Lake City. I thought it was a really good episode. Yeah, it was It was good. I was, in, I was entertained the whole time. Yeah. So the episode starts with Meredith recapping the girl's trip with Seth. And I say this all the time, but these scenes crack me up because 
you know they've already talked about this off camera, but what happens is, is producers, they tell housewives that they'll have this day and this time to record and recap with family or friends. Uh, Meredith does say she finds it laughable that Angie came for her when there are rumors out there about her. Again, rumors, like she keeps talking about these rumors, you know. <laughs> Um, and it's like, oh my gosh. I, I, I also what find was it weird to me it. is it felt like it was like the recap for the show, but they just let Meredith narrate it narrate it. Yeah. But they do that all the time. They do that with so many of them where they'll like narrate and be like, So what happened yesterday? And it's like, um, she called you on the way home when her mic was off. What are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. Cause that's literally me. Anytime like I'm on the way home, I could wait till I get home to talk to my husband, but I just call him in the car. So, Chantal, you and Val aren't, like, phone people, which is so weird. I know. I mean, we've gotten better, but, yeah, I don't, like, call him, like, seven times a day. I literally call my husband 300 times a day. And, like, I feel like he – and we were always like that. So, it's so weird that I felt like Chantal was never like that. I was like, okay, weird. Um, I was the type who'd be, like, to, like, oh, can you sleep on the phone with me? And we would both be on speaker. Ew, and, like, I'm cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Super cringe, super cringe when I think about these things and think back on my life and my like weird ways. But anywho, so Lisa meets with Meredith for some facials and Meredith tells Lisa that she's so happy they're good. And they do this awkward, uncomfortable forced hug. And I mean, I hope that this is like legit, but I don't know. It also seems like, seems like it's out of convenience, you know? Yeah, I agree. It's like, hey, I think we're friends. Yay. Let's give a hug. Right. I have gotten facials, but the photo was on a whole different level, and I would be traumatized seeing that. I mean, a couple things, okay? Lisa being banned from a tanning place is Oh, really yeah, that was hilarious. Wild and crazy, okay? She you, you're it. obsessed with Lisa, so I think you're going to get mad when I talk about her. But yeah, the fact that she's, she was even so insecure about this little, like, this facial photo, of course it's going to be ugly. Like, why would it be pretty? Meredith didn't look like that. No, Meredith, Meredith looked worse to me. No, it didn't, Chantal. Lisa kind of like has like, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it looked bad. I mean, I would be, I would have been so insecure about it. I'd have been like, okay. I can mean, you but now she should be ins- now she should be insecure with everyone being crazy about her, that one photo that you told me to yeah. look at last week. I feel bad for her for that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just thought the photo thing was like very traumatizing. So I I understood it. We hear more about Jack's mission, and Chantal, I would be crying. I think his mission's like two years, and they can't even visit him, and it's a no for me. No, that, that's that's sad. I would be like, no, you're not going. No, there's just no way I could go two years without seeing my and child. And why would you not be able to talk or see your parents? Like, that's shady. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite understand that, but yeah, that is messed up. Like, you need your parents to go two years of your whole life. Like, our life is so short to go two years not seeing your parents. That is wild, and it's, like, cruel. It's the first time you leave the home. Yeah. I'm, like, I would just, my kids would never be allowed to do that. Our parents I know you can't really... go to go to college away from our home. Oh, yeah, like, we would never be able to do that. They were so freaking crazy about that. I mean, I'm the only person who moved out, which was, like, the craziest thing ever because in our community, we're not allowed to do that until we're married. But mm-hmm. I swear that was the best time of my life. I had so much fun during that time, too. I know. <laughs> yeah, you literally did. Um, like, I just couldn't imagine Chantal, like, being, like, 30 and living with her parents. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. Not Everyone to attack me. her. I know. But honestly, like, this is every single person. Like, every – like my husband never moved out. It was all it was just me. And it's so crazy that I did that. I remember my dad taking it. Chantal like is in my life for every little thing because I remember my dad taking me to downtown Detroit. If anyone's familiar with downtown Detroit, it's actually beautiful now. I know there's like a stigma, but it's actually pretty beautiful. And I got a loft on top of the Nike building and it was a two minute walk from my work, like literally two minute walk from my work. And by the way, my mom lied to everyone and said, I moved because of school. Yeah. And <laughs> so me, Chantel, and my dad are in um, a truck, a U-Haul, and he's helping me move in. If I could tell you guys, my dad had a disgusting look on his face the entire time. Like it was the most negative energy vibe that I've ever gotten in my whole entire life. Do you remember that Chantel? Yeah. I think he just didn't understand it, but at least he was supportive and it was helping still. Well, I remember like, he's, I'm for that. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't. Yeah, exactly. You don't respect I mean, he was it or you don't like agree, but you're still there supporting. Exactly. He totally did that. I remember him sitting me down and he was like, listen, he's like, like, why are you doing this to us? And I'm like, dad, 
I was like, I hate driving with Chantal. Like, you know, I really do hate driving. I'm all about convenience. And I'm like, I hate driving. I was like, I drive to downtown every day. And I was like, this is two minutes. I was like, I'm very successful. I don't rely on you guys for money. Like I'm doing all of this on my own and I want to do this. Like it's very safe. Like downtown is so safe, especially where I work at the, where I work, the owner has 90 buildings in the downtown area and he basically runs all of downtown. So he had a security in every single corner and area. So it was honestly so safe. I'm like, it's safer than if I was at home with you guys. So, um, yeah, but you're so right. He really did look like he was so disgusted with me for doing that, but I mean, he was there and he still took us and that's like what was important. I feel like yes. anyone else would be like, that's so toxic. What do you mean? Like, that's still not a good thing. <laughs> I know. And we we're like, well, no, he showed up. Yeah, we have a problem of like highlighting the good and everything that they do. <laughs> I know. We're like, yeah, I know it's like super toxic, but it's not because you know what? (laughs) Other people are, other people in our like life that we know that our aunt or uncle, they're crazier. So like, honestly, like they're good. They're good. Um, But again, like our parents came from a different world. So like we do have to give them just credit and slack for how they are. Yeah. And like, they're our parents, dude. Like our parents, like my mom drives me crazy and she's still at my house every day. I'm sorry. Like that's my mom. Like, what do you want me to do? You know? Um, shout out to my mom who's listening. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's gonna. No, hear I'm gonna the send her this airport episode. story. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna send her this episode and be like, listen, and see if she'll call me and be like, she'll be like, why you talk about me like that? Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> no I she, can't. Yeah, what her, she's gonna get mad at us like doing an accent. On oh her. yeah. So my mom again, my mom is so sensitive. The biggest thing that she gets mad about because she has been in America since she was 12 is the accent that like I think one time like. I don't know who it was. Was it my husband or someone mocked her accent? And like, I promise for days she couldn't sleep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. We're getting so like all over the place. (laughs) She's so sensitive about that. I'm not sending this to her. I don't feel like dealing with that. Yeah, please don't. I know. Yeah. Okay. Anywho, back to the show. I don't even know what we're talking about. Um, so Lisa is hosting and she's inviting Monica and she says it's so much easier to just invite her than having Monica say, I'm not part of your 1%. And Chantal, like Lisa just has grown so much from season one. And I feel like it's because she's so used to the ladies coming for her that she doesn't care anymore. And I just love that for her. Yeah. I do like that. She's just acting not phased by anything. Yeah. By the oh my whole gosh. Thing, by so anything good. she's saying. She's just like, this is who I am. But then she also doesn't admit to who she is sometimes, but she's like giving off that um, perception. Yeah. Monica meets with Whitney and she wants to sit at the bar. And I hate sitting at the bar when restaurants are busy. My husband will be like, do you want to sit at the bar? I'm like, no, let's go somewhere else. Cause it's I so love sitting at the bar. Ew, I knew you do. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. No, I'd I want to be comfortable eating. I know, but it's like a vibe. Like, you know, it's like, it feels like dating. I mean, when, if you're with your husband, like, this is why I like sitting at the bar. I get it. Like if me and you were just going out to eat, I'd rather sit at a table. But when you're with your guy, like sometimes it's just nice. It feels dating. It like spruces it up. You know, I love it. My back hurts. That's not a vibe to me. (laughs) And I remember for his birthday, we went to like, we went to go have mimosas and it was so busy. And he's like, let's just sit at the bar. And I swear the whole time I was like, this is so whack and uncomfortable. Like my back needs like you know, it needs, what is it? Support. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It needs support. And I really do have a bad back. So if anyone has a bad back, you should understand what, why I'm saying this. You do. (sighs) Yeah. I have a bad back (laughs) after I had Jack, sweetie. Oh, my back literally hurts my, I had, okay. Can I just say this story? I'm sorry. I'm so annoying. (laughs) But you guys, when I had Jack, I had, um, like the resident do my epidural and I've had two kids before and she poked a hole in my back at least 35 times and kept asking me, does it feel right? Is it right? Is it in the middle? And, um, my husband didn't want to scare her. So he said nothing because he just kept seeing her poke the hole and take it out. And so my epidural didn't work and I have like 30 holes in my back and my epidural didn't work. So I started screaming and said, I feel everything. Take this out of me. There is no point of me having this in. And they brought the actual anesthesiologist. But by the time he came out, I was giving birth. So my back since then has been like a freaking nightmare. Wow. I mean, you knew that whole story, Chantel. I know that whole story, but I didn't know, like, now you still have problems with your back. Yeah. Like, even when I did Pilates, I was like, my back is really hurting. And, like, I swear. And my husband has major back problems. So now I'm like, man, like, I used to talk crap and be like, you're such a baby. And I'm like, no, like, like, back pain is the worst pain ever. 
have you like went to a chiropractor I don't have time Chantal okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like here I am having other kids like just I'll figure it out later but anyways so um Monica meets with Whitney uh wait I already said this <laughs> yeah but they're you know, they're t- it, they were start talking about Whitney. Whitney starts telling her what she doesn't like about Monica. Well, no. So Monica, Monica still doesn't think she's wrong with Lisa. And I appreciated Whitney here because she truthfully tells her, listen, I like you and your energy, but I had to take a step back seeing you go for your friend like that. And Monica's like, well, if your friend is acting crazy, you should call them out. And sure, maybe you do behind closed doors, not in front of anyone, or you're not a real friend. And the second Angie said something to Monica when she was acting crazy, Monica didn't like it. So I just wish Monica would own this. I I do think Monica was explaining herself um, decently to Winnie, but I don't. I don't. But think Winnie that. wasn't having it because she was yeah. saying like. But no, I, I don't think she was because she was like, yeah, like you tell your friends when they're crazy. Yeah, you take them to the side behind closed doors and be like, bitch, stop acting like that. Yeah, okay? yeah. I, I you still... don't do it in front of the audience that will be happy that you're doing that. Yeah, I still think what she's what she did to Angie was wrong. Yeah. Um, I just like was not having it. And I feel like she's getting tons of backlash, dude. Yeah. People are not really loving her. No, they're not. Um, but I still like, feel like she has potential. I just think she came in strong. But I, I like that though. We needed it for the show. That's so true. We truly did need her. So Whitney said she had like a huge flip and, Mo- and it was cause Monica was sucking up to Heather and Meredith. And, uh, Whitney is kind of reading Monica. And again, I want to give Monica a chance, but I've never agreed with Whitney more. And I typically don't agree with Whitney. Yeah. Whitney was just wasn't having it. She's like, no. Yeah. But Monica still says, I stand by what I said. And Whitney states the obvious that Monica is getting defensive. And then the launch gets awkward and I'm uncomfortable. And Monica says that she wanted to have Meredith's back because she felt like no one else did. But also you're choosing someone's back that you don't even know over your friends. Weird. Yeah. That's weird. It's like you're almost choosing, it's almost like you're choosing like someone that's popular in the group because you think he'll get you farther. Right. Winnie tells her she needs to be careful with Meredith and Meredith pulled them aside saying how she has like all this dirt on Angie and Monica's like, um, well, was she being nice about it? And I'm thinking, how the hell can someone be nice about saying they have shit on you? Like how? Why are you reading into it so much? Right. Because it's like, you know that no matter what, anyone who says that is wrong. If Lisa said that, you'd be, you'd crucify her. So what are we saying here? Winnie says there's just like a pattern with Meredith where she'll throw out rumors. And then um, I'm like, yeah, that's, it is kind of true. I'm liking Meredith this season though. I didn't like her last season, but I, I am liking her this season. Um, Now over on to Whitney. So her husband has not been working for a year because of his non-compete, but now he's going to go back to work. And she is like kind of frustrated. She doesn't want them to go backwards where she's back to doing majority of the chores. And I feel like Winnie's over him, Chantel. I oh 100 percent she's so over him because first off she is like really pretty and she looks better than she's ever looked and like he's like um not but, but they've been together for a while so hopefully like it's just like a rut sometimes it happens you know and hopefully they just get over that little hump it's kind of like when a guy gets super successful all of a sudden which like then they start changing their clothes their appearance they have money they have their like you know they finally have like their own money where they're not like you know working so hard and then they go and cheat on their like spouse i feel like that's well this is Winnie. this is where she gets balls and she's like listen like you we're not this is not me doing everything and you're sitting yeah. there doing nothing and working she so now she feels a confidence of her of her yeah. money coming in of herself so she's like, like we're both doing the same thing exactly so she's like no 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 and and if like he doesn't do any of that stuff then I think they'll have problems. But I think if he does try and he he is caring and doing more than just working, they'll make it. I do agree with Whitney that it's so important for her husband to know what's really going on, just like not doing drop off. And Whitney doesn't want to miss something. And I like that she's aware about that. Like she's so aware about her kids. Like I don't ever want them to think that, you know, we're missing something or I don't know. I really appreciated that about I her. I like I liked how they showed like they showed mostly everyone with their kids. And they're I feel like for the most part everyone Everyone really in the Housewives franchise are good parents. Yeah. You don't think so? <laughs> um, I don't know about that. I'm unclear. There's, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people choose, you know, they act way more distracted with the show. I don't know. 
I think um, Angie's relationship with her family is cute, but Angie says that their daughter gets majority of the attention and that their marriage has taken a second place. And it could be because that's like their only child. I feel like a lot of parents who have just one child maybe act like that a little bit, but Angie owns that she's so focused on her daughter that she forgets she's a wife. And I don't think the relationship will get very far, especially on TV if Angie continues neglecting her husband. Yeah. And I think when them going on TV, one is an out for their marriage or two, they'll start to notice and say, oh, whoa, something's yeah. really wrong. Yeah. Um. So Heather feels responsible that her daughters get bullied and picked on because the book she wrote. Yeah, no bl- shit. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> dude. Like, look where you're at. Like, Mormon Central. Like, what? Like, you can't I- talk about this one, that same community that your children are still going to school know, in and not expect them to get picked on. I know. Well, I'm glad the sisters have each other. I do think a majority of the kids in high school or middle school get bullied either way. So I don't know if it's like a Mormon thing. I don't know if she's trying to make it like this is how Mormons act because I just feel like this is like what happens in general. But I understand as a mom feeling that way. We just want to protect our children and – you know, honestly, her daughters, to me, they were just so mature because they realized it's out of their control so that the only thing they can control is their reaction. And for them to even have that mindset is so mature. I agree. I feel like that took me five years ago to realize that. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, these like 16 year olds, like what? Uh, so anyways, Lisa's hosting this event and everything looks amazing. And it's funny how the girls wear sunglasses inside but I know it's super sunny. Uh, it, it, like you could see the windows were pretty strong. But this made me want to have some champagne, Chantel. Oh, I know. I Sucks gotta... you can't drink. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but like, didn't the party look really nice overall? Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it was funny. She made it all about her her liquor. So, well, that was the point of the party. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that was the point because she said it was just like the apri. It's like a drink after no skiing or skiing. Oh, but my they didn't ski. Girl. She never mentioned that was for her 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 vodka line or her teal line, and then we come in it's for and her it's, business. It's Vita everywhere. Oh my gosh! Okay, someone she tell didn't us say who's that. Wrong. Tell us who's wrong, you guys, because now I'm unclear. And she's making me insecure about this. So she just said I'm having an Apra ski with no ski party. Okay, well, because there's like some affiliation there. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I mean, so- Apra means it's going to have a drink after you ski thank you Chantal we understood that yes, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. so I don't think so, you know that <laughs> okay well no I didn't but you you explained that though <laughs> so Monica says that she's happy and Lisa's like good I, I like when you're happy but Lisa does say it bummed you know me out with with how you acted towards me and um Monica was like well I was just hitting your prickly and Lisa was like you literally called me a piece of shit though and Lisa owns she's materialistic and says everyone in the room is. And Monica starts naming how she's wearing Zara and Steve Madden. And that's fine. I don't think Lisa has ever made it like you're a peasant if you don't wear the things she wears. She just likes wearing those things. Yeah, that's where I think where Monica is annoying. It's like she's not coming at you or making – is she making yeah, you making feel fun less than? Or... Exactly, nothing. Like I am someone who – like does not care about designer. And I still think Lisa is completely fine with how she is. I, so but I don't, I don't think that. Lisa owns that she's materialistic. She even said in her confessional, she's like, I'm not materialistic. It's like, yeah, you are. You like material I, I things. I think deep down you, she does own it. You, you like Dolce Gabbana because it's, it's the name, not because it's like better material. You don't know that. Did she say that? No, but I know that. Like you, that's what oh, people Chantel like. Oh, Chantel knows that you guys. Well, yeah. All right. So Monica is doing this weird thing where Lisa's like, I work hard. And Monica looks at the people who give you the food and she's like, they work hard too. And it's like, dude, Lisa is not saying that they don't. What the F is actually going on? Like, why do you, like Lisa's not putting people down when she says she works hard. She's not trying to compare that she works hard. She works harder than the, than the chefs or whoever those people, the servers, like she's not putting them down. I don't know why you're bringing them into this. And then the day it's her money. So like, get over it. Like whatever she wants to spend her money on, that's her choice. And Lisa's like, if you want to judge me, judge everyone here. Okay. Because like yeah. half of them do the same thing that she does. So I'm kind of confused here. Wrong crowd. Yeah. Monica then brings up how Lisa said she could have been in a private jet with Snoop Dogg. And then Monica brings up Lisa coaching Angie. And it's like, I don't know why she keeps bringing her friend Angie into this. Then Andy, Andy, Angie tries to feed Monica. And Monica's like, are you joking? Angie probably shouldn't have like put that in her mouth, you know? 
I know. It was weird. The way that Angie was trying to, like, insert herself and, like, stick up for Lisa was just, like, a weird but situation. Chantel, it's, but it was after after Monica says, the only thing you coach is Lisa or or, or, or um, Angie. Like, so it's like, oh, my gosh, shut up with this whole Angie stuff. Um, Monica does threaten to unleash the Pandora about Angie. And that was so shady to me. Angie didn't even catch that. Oh, I didn't. I don't think I did either. What do you mean? Yeah, there was a scene where she's like, um, where okay, so when she put that um thing on her face, like the what was that, the the biscuit in her mouth or whatever, uh, Monica threatens. To, she goes, I, I will unleash the Pandora box on Angie, and Lisa says that's rude, Monica, and she does like this hand gesture, and then they start like fighting about whose hand is in whose face. Yeah, so, yeah. And then Mary comes in and she's like, "What's happening?" And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh my, my gosh, gosh Mary." Mary. Yeah. It's funny because Mary is loving the attention on her outfit and she wears designers. And I bet Monica would never say a damn thing to Mary. She hasn't said anything to anybody. And they all, yeah. wear, they all yeah. wear designer. But no one cares more about designer than Mary, which is like so scary because it's like, I need you to fix your house, boo boo. <laughs> and not like worry about your clothes. I don't know. I like Mary, but then I think about stuff that she does and I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know. Listen, don't this know. is the thing. This is the thing about Mary. She's hilarious and she's just for pure entertainment. But yeah. she's very shady. No Everything other ever... housewife would ever get away with what Mary's gotten yes. away with. None. She's exactly. She's like, there's so many weird things about her, and I would never trust her. But for entertainment purposes, like she's funny. But I don't like yeah. her as a person. Yeah, exactly. I do love, and I think Lisa. there's like a deep dive that like people have done it, a deep dive on her, and there's just there is so yeah, Bravo much. Bravo Docket, I think, has done it, and people have told us to go listen to that. So yeah, I do love how Lisa diffuses a situation with Monica. That would be so hard to do, and Lisa really is just trying to live her best life and is genuinely happy. And she's like, "Listen, we're good, we're good." I was like, "Wait, what? Like, how are you able to move forward with her after she acted like that at your party?" It was all very um too much. <laughs> yeah, I was so shocked by that. I could never. Mary is like, Whitney looks cheap, and she's on 10 with Whitney. Like, she does not – she she can't with Whitney. She's just crazy. Like, the way she's – Oh, my she God. Just, like, wait, no, Chantal. Everyone. No, Chantal. When Monica, when Mary calls out Monica for loving to eat <gasps> oh, – Chantal. Oh, no, no. Okay, let me say something, and I'll say this. I don't care how skinny you are. If someone talks about how you're eating a lot, that will make anybody sad. Like, I would go home that night and cry. Oh my gosh. I wanted to die right then and there. First off, if I'm hungry and want to crepe and someone's looking at me some type of way, I would immediately feel uncomfortable. And Mary starts looking at her like kind of like in a disgusted way. And she's like, you like to eat, don't you? Do you not care what you eat? And uh, she then says, because every time I see you, you're eating. And it's like, um, Mary, you were eating Mickey Donald's last week's episode. Oh but my I gosh. That is so, that is so like a good comparison because she's like she acting was. like, she's like acting like she needs Monica to be healthy. Right. And it's like, Monica is like, you know, like thicker. So it's not like she's like completely like stick thin. I like her body. I prefer her body, but I'm sure that would make Monica feel so insecure. I would have felt so uncomfortable if I was her. If Lisa had said that Monica would have went crazy, but she's like, I'm on a mission for Mary to like me. And I even think Chantal Monica put a pillow on her stomach because she probably felt so insecure at that moment. Like, do you ever do that when you're super full? You'll put a pillow on your stomach just to, like block your stomach. Yeah, if I was wearing something really tight. It is right. funny though because she she clearly she doesn't she's not like these girls. Like, I mean, hopefully she doesn't turn. But even when she was like getting her dinner with Whitney, she got like occasion pasta, and Whitney's yeah. getting like a, a salad. You know, so it's like she just doesn't care. I know. I hope that doesn't change next season. I just thought it was so nasty, and Meredith is just sitting there, and I'm just like. This is so mean. Like I, okay. So I, <laughs> I have this cousin, you guys, that every time I eat and if like we're having like, a gathering and I eat a second one and uh, she's probably listening to this. I don't know if she listens to these ones though, but um, every time I eat a second place, she'll be like, damn Roxanne, you were hungry, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're so annoying. Stop paying attention to me. Like you were so annoying. I did. Okay. I had a small plate and I'm getting another plate. And she always does that. She'll be like, damn, like, and keep in mind this cousin that we have, she literally can eat a burger in half a second. Like she is a very fast, like eater. And we're just always like, are you okay? But maybe like us asking if she's okay, like in return, she'll be like, damn, you're hungry. And we're like, okay. Yeah. Like I'm, like I said, cause Roxanne's literally a toothpick. 
it doesn't matter how skinny you are like you you would get insecure by that comment oh my gosh i always do i'm always like oh my god this is like and this is my cousin i'm always like okay but like inside i'm like okay like i need to not eat because well no but why are you paying attention why is anyone paying attention to what someone's eating yeah i don't understand I hate that. that i hate that more than anything oh my god oh, we have like a couple of cousins who do that they'll pay attention to what we're eating and it's like honey go focus on you and stop starving to me yourself. the only the only time i've ever paid attention to anybody's eating is that when like we have those friends or cousins that order too much and they don't end up eating it like that is <laughs> me <off>. yeah <laughs> Uh, I mean, I like, do eat it, but my eyes. Because it's like we're yeah. glutinous at that point. We're wasting, like, unless you're going to take it home, like, great. But, like, when you just order for your eyes and then you don't eat it, like, that's what gets me. It's like. Oh, no. I always hungry? take it home. I'm like, can I have a box? I'm going to wake up at 3 a.m. Yeah. and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so I always be taking that shit home. Are you kidding me? I get sad when it's, like, someone I'm kind of embarrassed to say I'll take it home. And they, I'll be like, no, you take it. And then inside I'm like, wait, I wanted to take that home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. I think sad. I always give it to you. Oh, yeah, you always do. Because, like, well, just like Chloe, me and her sister will always be like, oh, our husband wants, like, we, we'll take it for our husband. But it's really we, for you? No, because, like, my husband really will eat it. So. <laughs> but, like, we always, like, use that excuse, you know. Um. Anyway, so Whitney pulls Monica aside and is like, as Angie's friend, I think we should tell her Meredith is talking about a rumor regarding her. And Monica reveals what the rumor is, even going as low as saying, I'm shocked that you didn't know this. Everyone has heard this rumor. And the rumor was so typical because there's such a stigma about male hairdressers. So, of course, we all knew what the rumor was going to be. So she says that Angie's husband bangs men. And I think, unfortunately, that's just the typical stigma when it shouldn't be at all. Um, I feel like, okay, yeah, it was valid back in the day. Like, people would just think it. I don't, not that it was valid people would just think it but to think it now is like so silly so um i think they're just pulling this from their ass because of the stigma so monica says um that they have an arrangement and their marriage is completely fake and so they go and they confront her and angie knows something off something's off and whitney confronts angie with Monica and Monica is the one who says what the rumor is. And Angie says she's been with her husband for over 20 years and that she's the, and that the only person who's spreading their legs outside of their marriage is Meredith. Um, I did not, I, I don't think he's stepping out with other men. Angie's husband, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that she was making it seem like um, Meredith's husband is like a cheater too, but um, I don't think, I mean, I don't know him. Like this is our first time really seeing him. So is there proof? Like, wh why are no. people saying this? Exactly. Rob Chanel, they're saying it because of the hairdresser. Like, he's a hairdresser. There's a stigma on a hairdresser. So, you didn't watch this, but on Watch What Happens Live, Andy was pissed about this. He says that he hates when men are accused of, you know, being with other men on the show. He says it's the grossest thing when a husband is accused. And then they start saying as though it's, like, a bad thing. But um, when they go as low as putting a rumor like this out there, so they asked Angie's husband about it because Angie's husband was on Watch What Happens Live and Angie's husband says, look, it's not about a gay or straight thing. It's an infidelity thing. And he's like, I don't step out on my wife. And he's like, I'm here to support Angie. And he's like, I I'll take the heat for this or the hits for this. But he's like, it's an infidelity thing. And that's not something I do. Wow, and, that's amazing. Right. Like he actually had the best answer. And he like, he's like, listen, we are so close to the gay community. Like we have worked and done things with them, whatever. Um, and he was like, it's not about gay or straight. It's about infidelity. Like I'm a married man. And I was like, oh, wow, that was such an amazing answer. And Andy is so funny though, because he says he hates when they put out rumors about this, but then he proceeds to ask Angie if she has heard this rumor before. And when she says, absolutely not, he acts shocked. And he points out that the women are making it like that. This has been out there for a while. Yeah, because now if it's their narrative to, to say that. Yeah, but my whole point about Andy is like you're acting – you just said in the beginning like this pisses you off about the show is when these rumors come out about the men that they're like in a gay – that they're like in a gay relationship and, you know, that the women like always put it out there. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, Angie, like you really never heard this? It sounds like the <laughs> women all knew about it. And I'm like, come on, Andy. Messy Andy. I know. Well, that's what we got, you guys, for – uh. I don't know, very, two very, very great episodes. Um, also, the reason that I was, if you guys are still listening, the reason that I was like so late is because today is Melissa's fashion, tonight was Melissa's fashion show. So I literally had people there and they kept messaging me. So I could not get through 
my day without like these people messaging me and then watching the OC reunion. So we're going to do a podcast episode about things that went down at the fashion show, what we heard from people who were there. And, um, we also want to do an episode about like maybe in the same episode about Psy. Um, we do have some tea on the cast trip for New Jersey. We're going to talk about that on Patreon. So make sure you guys have joined our Patreon and you're just there to support us too. Uh, We'll talk about some other things on Patreon as well, but please make sure that you guys subscribe to this because every time we have an episode, um, it'll notify you guys. And anything else you have to say, Chantel? It's 1132. My God. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear all the tea that we are going to talk about. Yep. All right, then. Well, you guys have a great day because you guys are probably listening to this in the morning. Um, And we'll talk soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.